Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's have a look at Tomb Raider Remastered. It's the classic Tomb Raiders we know and love. The first three of them. But they're remastered with fancy new graphics and lighting effects and models and all that lovely stuff, including the original cutscenes which have been upscaled using machine learning or whatever, you know, AI. Um, which is good stuff. With the uh, expansion pack content, I think, as well. And um, it does one of my favorite things that remasters of, of these games sometimes do, which is allows you to switch seamlessly between the old and new graphics by pressing F1 on your keyboard you get the original graphics press it again remastered what I am going to do is I'm going to go through I'm going to show you like a little bit of the first level of each of the games and we'll do a little funky live graphics comparison and then I think we'll dive into Tomb Raider 2 starting with the uh, with the mansion and play that for a while and just enjoy it I'll show you some of the features while we're at it as well. So, um, let's start off with the OG Tomb Raider. This is the opening cutscene, which has been upscaled a bit. I'm going to skip, however. This is a loading screen. And we're in. In the first level, which is Vilcabamba. Which in the original game looks something like this. And what's amazing to me as well, actually, honestly, is that... that when you turn it into original graphics mode, um, like the frame rate goes down. It's, it's kind of like the frame rate becomes capped at the old 30 or so that, of the original. But if you go to the remastered graphics, we get we get a lovely 60 frames per second. Um, now, visually, it's a little bit different from what I remember because apparently the OG graphics in the remaster are actually more based on the PlayStation graphics rather than the PC version. So the colors and stuff are a bit different. And also, I have some weird artifacting right now with, um, like, you notice the, the flickery lines on Lara's hair. I think that's a me problem. I think that's a my graphics driver settings problem rather than an issue with the game itself. Um, but... As you can see, it's uh, it's not like a full-on remake, it's a remaster. Which means it is pretty much the original levels and gameplay as they were, just visually overhauled. It's worth noting that there is an option. Ow. Failed at the first hurdle there, haven't I? Um, there is an option to go for so-called modern controls. And once again, even in the menus, you can switch to original graphics if you want to. Um, if we go to controls, we can change from the original tank controls, which is the record rendered way to play the game, I should note, to modern controls. And if we play with modern controls, we can control the camera with the mouse. And now we move Lara around with W, A, S, and D instead of the cursor keys. Jump with space. Um, control to roll. I think left click on the mouse is the action button. Right click hold and hold gets out the guns. Um, and you can play like this with a sort of more, air quotes, modern control scheme. And it doesn't work that badly. It's kind of interesting. Um, it still incorporates some of the jerky original camera movements like there. Like in the original game, it'll the camera will point at that, that, that bit there just to tell you that's the way you're supposed to be going. What's really weird is if you play with the modernized controls with the OG graphics, this does feel very strange. Um, oh, I believe there's a secret up there, isn't there? Let's try and grab that if we can. The thing is, though, I find I find the game, in many ways, to actually be harder to play ugh, with the um, with the modernized controls, just because the jumping and stuff doesn't really work the way it's kind of supposed to. Like you can't make her do a lot of the. See, I'm I'm, I'm struggling even just to make this simple jump here. Um, you can't get her to do stuff like backflips and side jumps and things like that, which she is able to do with the tank controls um there we go let's grab that now how do i is it right click is it left click how do i pick this up is it e it's e e i think to, to is the action button there we go so grab that little little secret there 
I've, it remains to be seen, really, for, for me, whether... The modern controls probably make combat a little easier. Probably, uh, call that actually probably almost definitely make combat a bit easier. Because you can, you can fluidly change direction a lot more easily in combat to evade enemies and whatnot. But it does dumb down the combat quite significantly, admittedly, and removes a lot of the challenge. So again, don't know if I really necessarily recommend it. But it's it's up to your sort of discretion. It's perfectly reasonable to just go through the game switching the controls as you go. It'd be, almost be nice if there was actually a keyboard shortcut to do that. Um, you know, switch to more modern controls for certain sections and switch back to the original tank controls for others. I think uh, For me, this would probably take quite a bit of getting used to before I'm really comfortable with the modern controls. And to be totally honest with you, I... Um, I don't think I want to get used to the modern controls, is the thing. Um, I'm quite happy to ooh, nope, play with the original tank controls as God intended. That's better. Don't forget about photo mode. Oh yes, of course, photo mode. So we can you have photo mode as well, which uh, is a sort of modern game standard feature these days. Not that I'm complaining, I always quite like photo mode because I like taking screenshots of games as I'm playing them. Um, I love that the menu kind of looks like it, it like it would if it had actually existed in the game at the time. Even when you even when you uh, when you go to classic graphics, it downgrades the menu resolution, which is kind of hilarious. I think different outfits as well, change weapons. It's kind of fun, isn't it? Really, but uh, yeah, it's it's quite fun. I mean, just switch backwards and forwards with F one. While in photo mode, which is kind of neat. You are going to say the graphics are kind of bad, then you shifted to old school? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You think these graphics are bad, do you? Behold! <laughs> I played through the entirety of this game on stream not so very long ago on with these graphics, and I thought it was just fine, thank you. And to be honest, I am absolutely delighted that they have included the original graphics as a thing you can switch to, because I like the original graphics. They have charm. There are plenty of modern games being released nowadays that deliberately are copying this PlayStation 1 aesthetic. People like this, myself included, so I'm glad that it's still available, you know, and you can just seamlessly switch between the two. Some doggos to shoot. Again, original graphics. The sounds do change a little bit um, when you go original graphics. The camera angles do as well sometimes, you may have noticed. Um, the only difference is it's the same sound effects, but in certain areas when you're playing in remastered mode, there's more uh, like reverb in, in the wider open areas and whatnot. You may notice the gunshots echo more in this mode versus this mode. But it is still the same original sound effect, so it's a nice a nice blend of upgrading the sounds a little tiny bit without spoiling it. Without getting rid of that nostalgia. I keep wanting to press the sprint button, because I'm more used to playing Tomb Raider 4. Nice try, doggy. Oh yeah, and these, these items on the floor are like 3D objects now, whereas in the original game they were 2D sprites. Four was the one in, entirely in Egypt. Yeah, yeah, that's the, that's the one I've actually played the most. Because that was my first Tomb Raider game. I'd love it if they... If if they if this sells and it went well enough, and I, I suspect it probably will, because this seems to be getting really good reviews, this. Um, I'd love it if they remastered the, uh, the remaining uh, classic Tomb Raiders. Yep, there we go. Only one of three secrets found. What a filthy casual I am. Very good. Did that include Angel of Darkness? No, because Angel of Darkness is a completely different engine, I think. That's a whole other can of worms, Angel of Darkness. I think we, we really, realistically, I'm talking like Tomb Raider 4 and Chronicles. Um, those are the ones I'd like to see remastered in this exact style. It's interesting how they've interpreted a lot of the visual design from the original game. Like, the light around this pool clearly is meant to kind of... Uh, give the impression that there's light coming down through this this um, ceiling bit here. 
even though the original game it's all blocked off. So in the remaster, they've they've kept the lighting essentially intact. Like you notice how it's a bit more lit, lit, well lit in that corridor, and also in this spot here. That that stays with the new graphics, but obviously it makes more sense because they've put like a skylight in there now. I like it because it sort of does a nice job of of it almost sort of. If you hadn't played the game in like twenty years, and you bought this remaster and started playing it with these graphics, I feel like. It, the game would probably almost sort of look as good as you remember it being in your head. That's a phrase I remember the Age of Empires 2 remastered developers talked about a lot. Making the game look as good as you remember it, rather than as good as it actually was. Because in your mind's eye, you probably remember the game looking at much better than it actually did. And I feel like that's kind of what these graphics do. Anyway, I'm I'm gonna quit out this level now actually because I want to dive in and look at these some of the other ones too, um, just for a point of comparison. So we can have a little. I'm gonna we'll come back to Tomb Raider 2 because that's the one we're gonna spend some time with today. But we'll have a little look at the opening level of Tomb Raider 3. I used to have a demo for this. I've never actually played all the way through Tomb Raider 3, but I did play the demo for the opening level. I remember it has it has a bunch of spike traps in it that I remember my mother being absolutely horrified by with the death animations. No, another another opening cutscene, which I'm going to skip past. And here we are, in the jungle in India, and it's raining. Original graphics, almost reminds me of a bit of Trespasser. This these graphics versus remaster graphics. Quite a dramatic difference on this level, actually, as well. Specifically, very different. I mean, the skybox. I mean, Jesus Christ. Um, down we go. Sliding down. There's a monkey. You can shoot the monkey if you really want to. You'll notice that in 3, the graphics, even the original graphics are definitely improved versus the first game. Lara herself has got more polygons. Her boobs are, of course, no longer triangles. Um... And the sounds are a bit improved in quality as well. Now then, how? What's the best way to do this? There's a bunch of bonus items you can get here if you just if you do this correctly. Uh, am I going to save? No, I don't think I will. If we just... Oh dear, I've gone down backwards. That was not the plan. And we're straight onto the spikes. Just like back in the day. There we go. Spike death. Original graphics. Spike death. Remastered graphics. Perfection, yes. Okay. She has got a ponytail, yes, in in, in, in Tomb Raider 2. That's where they she got her um her award-winning physics-based ponytail. Here we go. Gotta hop over this way a little bit. And then, there we go. We can grab the shotty ammo. And the health pack. And avoid the boulder. Yes, sneaky boulder. The thing I, I remember about these games a, a lot... Oof, that was lucky. The thing I remember, really remember about these games a lot is um, how the difficulty curve consistently increases throughout the three games. Like, um... You finish Tomb Raider 1, and you get to a certain level of competence with the game engine. And Tomb Raider 2 more or less picks up exactly where that difficulty curve leaves off and carries on going upwards. Until you get to the third game, and even like the opening level here is kind of brutal, with all those spike traps and having to jump correctly across there and whatnot. Uh, Tomb Raider 3 has some of like the most annoyingly difficult levels in the series as well. Like the London levels in this game, just they're infamously difficult. I, I imagine the uh, the remaster has preserved that difficulty. Now, if I recall, this is all quicksand in it. In the original game, it's the same textures as all that we're standing on, but they're rippling a bit to give you a clue, a clue, a little hint that this is not what it seems. It doesn't ripple with the remaster graphics, but the texture is different.
And oh, we're sinking into it. And if we go further out, we'll sink even further. But we can get out if we don't go too far. I think. Unless we're absolutely completely boned, I don't remember. But, like, already we've got, like, multiple ways to horribly die. In the foot, there we go. Oh! In the first... Moments of the level. Just Tomb Raider 3 making clear that, uh... Yep, um... We hope you played the previous games because we're not going to pull any punches. Oh, I like the reflections on the puddles. That's nice. No puddles in the original. Uh, you want to make sure you absolutely do a jump correctly. You walk to the edge, hop back once, run forwards, hold jump, and then action. And when she hits the edge, she will automatically jump as long as you're holding the jump button. It's a little automated system. That the first game teaches you. It's one of those things where if you don't understand it, the game becomes very, very frustrating. Because Lara seemingly will not jump when you tell her to. The alternative way to climb ledges. Oh, I yes, I know what you mean. I I don't remember if she can do it until Tomb Raider 4. Let me see. Um, if you hold... You have to hold down a certain button. I just don't remember what it is. And it's not one that's listed in the controls menu. So it's... it's how do you do it? Hold down control and then shift? Yeah, hold down shift and she does the little... Weird... Handstand when she climbs up. There we go. I'm gonna spend a fuck loads of time playing these on my own time. I, I'm telling you, man. Like, this is the, my my next. The, all my free time this coming next week is gonna be this. Anyway, I want to look at Tomb Raider 2 because it's the one I've played the most out of these three. Um, and it's the most. Well, it's the Tomb Raider game I've played the most. Full stop. Actually, after Tomb Raider 4, and um, this is the one I want to dive into for today's stream. Really, the most because there's a lot of iconic levels in this game that I really, really am keen to see what they look like in the remaster. Uh, but we'll start off with, as tradition holds, Lara's home. The mansion. Welcome back. After that grueling business last year, I decided to build this assault course to hone my skills and learn some new ones. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. There's the butler. The farting butler. And of course we will be locking him in the freezer, don't you worry. Some traditions must be upheld, after all. Um, there's the OG graphics. Again, I think I have some issues with my drivers at the moment, which is why these uh, models have weird a weird wireframe effect on them. But yeah, it's pretty darn cool. Photo mode as well, let's not forget. We can have some fun, probably. How, how far can you go with the camera when you're in photo mode? I'm curious. Like... To what extent can we explore the level just in this? Quite a bit, actually. Oh, no! We can use this to cheat with the hedge maze! Oh! Oh, that's just wrong. I had not considered this. Deary me. Deary, deary me. I wonder if I can... I wonder if the glitch that lets you get up onto the rooftop still works. If I can remember how to do it. I think we'll have a, we'll have a crack at the obstacle course. And we'll um, we'll get the butler locked in the fridge, and we'll then I'll then maybe try and tackle the hedge maze puzzle, and I'll see if I can uh, see if I can glitch onto the roof like in the original game. All right, let's see if I can tackle the obstacle course. I used to get pretty good times on this back in the day. For bigger gaps, nope. I need to do already job. fucked up. Back okay, okay, okay. Shaking the rust off. Let's do this. Got to jump diagonally a little bit at the start there. There we go. That's how you do it. Oop. Okay, Fuck. Missed it. Just, you need just to make didn't money. quite manage it. Right on the edge. There we go. Brilliant. Arguably the hardest part is now done, to be honest. There's weird parallax effect they've used on some of the ladder textures in the game. I'm, it's the one part of the remaster I'm not sure how I feel about. It looks a little weird. Oh, I've lost valuable time by not going this way to begin with, actually. Oops. Never mind. I 
tried this off camera and I think I got a time of 1 minute 24 seconds. I doubt I'm going to beat that. I think I've already done worse. Oh dear. Oh, you can't go on the top, can you? I forgot. You're going to go underneath. We start on the edge of the grid so I can just hold alt and I'll cross she goes. Hop. Then left. Then forward. Arguably, you could just do a running jump there, actually, from the middle one, but never mind. Grab. Very good. Run. Jump. Swim through the tunnel. Over to the left. Jump. Climb up here. And this is the tricky bit. You can screw yourself over if you don't climb, if you don't shimmy quite far enough over to the right. You gotta go like to there, and then only now will she actually climb up properly. <sighs> then we walk to the edge without falling off, zip line down to the bottom, and one minute twenty three seconds. I've actually beaten my previous time by like one second. I'm very proud of myself. Mission accomplished. Man, I spent so much time on this obstacle course. Anyway, let's go inside, shall we? There we go. Inside. Which definitely looks improved these days with the new graphics. The big thing is the draw distance, I think, for me. Because everything fades into that black fog in the distance otherwise. And we can turn the music on, right? Oh, look at the updated uh, graphics on the, on, the, on, the, on the sound system. It's got 3D knobs and dials and things now. The suits of armor have definitely been upgraded too. <laughs> yeah, we can still have the music. Right, come with me, Mr. Butler. We're going to the kitchen. And yes, the kitchen still has the world's most absurdly gigantic sink. Just like in the original game. Lara has a sink that's bigger than most bathtubs. I love, genuinely, that they did not feel the need to change this in any way. <laughs> it also has like a chest of drawers on the front that makes no sense either. All right, Butler, let's lock you in the darn fridge, shall we? All right. That is the tricky bit. Can we quickly? Quickly! Ha ha! <laughs> Success. Just like in the original game. Poking his nose through the door. And yes, he's, he, go, he turns blue. He turns blue and becomes frozen in the remaster. Which is uh, pretty funny. <laughs> nice touch, that. <laughs> anyway, now with the butler safely, uh, cryogenically frozen. Let's go tackle that hedge maze. I have no idea where I'm going right now. I might as well be just trying to use the force to guide me through this place. Of course, we could just cheat and use the photo mode, apparently. That's a thing now. A scandalous use of modern technology. Although, actually, this is starting to look familiar. There we go. Yeah, there we are. Okay, OG graphics. A bit less difficult to see. I say a bit less. Way less difficult to see. Okay. Now I wish I could quick save. In the manner, but I can't. I do, however, seem to have some flares. Probably going to help, yeah. Let's use one, shall we? OK, 
Okay, let's press that. I'm not going to nail this on the first go, but I'll give it a try anyway. Okay, let me run this way. Is it to the right to the end? I feel like I might have gone the wrong way. Oh, oh no, okay, here we go. This is, this is, here we go. I don't know if we're going to make it in time, but I've managed to make my way out at least. I'm going to be annoyed with myself if I can't manage this. It's going to shut right in front of me, isn't it? Yep, yep, fucking knew it. Oh, this challenge is, is not easy. All right, here we go. I think, oh yeah, that's the other thing. You can actually still move Lara while she's in that cutscene, while we're in that little camera switch. So that's a pro tip. All right, it's all coming back to me now. Yeah, you can do that. You can totally do that. Get You can pre hit the end key and then press forward to get Lara running towards the exit while that door opening bit is still playing. All the pro strats are coming back now. Right, and we're out. Okay, I've made it further before the flare went out, which means I think we're doing better. Come on, door. Yes! Fucking did it, man! Although I do want to light another flare, because God, it's doubt down here. It's neurons activated. Yes, useless vestigial bits of, of memory are, are, are coming back online in my brain. And here we are in the basement with all the treasure. And I got an achievement for it too! Class! In Lara's treasure vault. If you go with, which I think includes possibly a few items from the original game. That's what it looks like. With the OG graphics. Here it is, modernized. I feel like that, that cat statue is from the original game. It's from, from Tomb Raider 1. I wonder if... How do you do the... I'm instinctively trying to quick save right now. How do you do the dot swan dive? I can't remember. Is it... Oh, and then shift. There we go. There, you hold shift. Then you do the swan dive like that. Now then, before we go... Let's see if the glitch that lets you get onto the roof still works. The trick is you have to get a sort of slightly inside the geometry and then hit jump a bunch of times. And I think the way it works in the original, I, I have, I'm getting the sense that it might not work in this because of whatever new version of the engine they're using. But the way it kind of works in the original was like Every time she jumps, she moves a little bit. And then eventually she sort of glitches into the geometry of the wall, and then she basically floats all the way up to the top onto the roof. But I, it doesn't, I don't seem to be able to get it to do that. Maybe it's a different... We'll, we'll try a different corner of the house. But it might, it might honestly be the... Um, it might be the new engine. Because I, if I recall... No, it's not down here, is it? No. Um... In the original, in the original Tomb Raider 2, every time she did a jump on the spot like that, she would actually jump up and she would move actually slightly to the right every time she does it until she's inside the wall and then glitches up to the top. But she doesn't seem to do that in um, in the remaster. No, it's not working. If anything, she's moving forward and to the left. Deary me, zero out of ten cannot do roof glitch, ladies and gentlemen. I'm officially changing my review of this game to a negative. So let's uh, start a new game. Let's go to the actual first proper level, shall we? Here's the original cutscene. Upscaled. seen all the way through.
That's when you think the madness in the first game is a one-off, yeah. I mean, the first game was pretty off, 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 off the wall, wasn't it? It was a bit unhinged. It was like space aliens or something, wasn't it? Or ancient Atlantis space aliens, if I recall, something like that. In the first game, yeah, meet Atlanteans. Yeah, you, you end up sort of there's that level where you go inside their spaceship or something, and it's like the fucking meat dimension. Mutated monsters created by ancient immortal Atlanteans. Right. With meat, Lara. Yes. Man, I'm almost tempted to just just try and. I'd love to be able to do. I'd love to be able to do that level just to be able to see remastered Meat Lara. That would be hilarious. and thus begins the first level. Let's sliding down into this pit. And there we go. And yeah, I've said it before already, but I think it was a genius move to basically just make Lara in the remaster look exactly like she does in the cutscenes. There's a helicopter. Bye-bye. Alright. And this corner here. Go. And the Tigger is here. There he is. Hello, Tigger. Original graphics. Pretty greeny, pixelated textures everywhere. Has its charms, though, as I said. I do still like the original graphics, and I'm absolutely delighted that you can switch between them whenever you like. Name empty here. Here, then jump over to here, collect the secret, which is a 3D object in this. In the original game, it was a 2D sprite. Uh -huh. One of the three secrets in the level. Uh, and now I am actually going to start saving. The level one with the, 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 oh, the level from one with the, with the raptors and the T-Rex is very different as it actually has a skybox. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that level was weird in the original game because the, that bit didn't have a skybox, so it felt like you were just in a gigantic cave or something the entire time. Even though it was supposed to be a canyon. Whoop. Yeah, pro tip, you can still move whenever the camera changes like that. The beauty of the movement system in this and the level design being grid-based is that even when the camera is not pointed at Lara, you can just do the controls and you'll know exactly what she's meant to be doing. Like, I knew that because I had her flipped around with her back to that wall, all I would have to do is press forward and hold jump, and she would automatically make that jump at the correct moment at the edge. Across. I'm pointing at the screen like you're sat here with me. Um, <laughs> jump across, and then all I'd have to do is hold action to, to grab this ledge and climb up, even with the camera pointed completely in a different direction. There's like a real knack to it. There's a real serious skill to it. I know I've always been a, honestly, a little bit crap at these games. I can get through. I can just about muddle my way through. With enough quick saving and quick loading. But I'm genuinely not that bad at and not that good at it. I, I've known people in the past who I've watched play this, who re are really, really, really good at the platforming and stuff, and I've watched them, like, speedrun through this. 
um, this entire level and stuff like that with like just absolutely frightening, astonishing speed. The way they know how to navigate the levels using the controls to like the most efficient possible degree is just truly a thing to behold. And I love it. I love it because modern games of this kind of nature have none of that challenge. There's none of that sort of learning of how to actually move around the environment. All you do is press left thumbstick forward and then maybe, maybe they'll make you press the A button to climb up things. Alternatively, you might just have to keep pushing the left thumbstick forward and your character will automatically climb, jump and do everything for you. Um... This is a Tomb Raider. You gotta actually like. There's effort required in navigating through all this shit, and I like it. And we'll grab that, which will have caused a tiger to spawn. Ah, oh, yeah, that by the way is one of those rocks I mentioned. That they've kind of uh, remastered. Ah. Need to get up here. There we go. Bad Tigger. I shoot you dead. Use the key we got in this lock. And then, I, if I recall correctly, I'm going to have to go shoot a load of Spoders. Spoders! Yes! Spoders, which, frankly, I think are probably a little bit easier to see with the OG graphics. I like moving the systems in games than you doing a Death Stranding stream. I don't think I'm going to stream Death Stranding because I don't think enough people will actually watch it to make it worth doing. But Death Stranding is a game that's been on my list of shit I need to play for quite a while. I actually own a copy of it. I have it. I've just not got around to playing it yet. Okay, move that out of the way so we can proceed. Now I believe there's a whole gauntlet of traps for us to run. Now the question is, am I going to be able to get the the second bonus secret thing without getting squished? That's always the hard part of this. Now if I just move forward far enough, can I get these to trigger? There we go. And again, this is another example of the sound being a bit different in the original versus the remaster because you've got a, some environmental reverb effects. Careful. Careful. And there we go. Right. This is where it starts to get a little hairier. Boulder chasing us now. Multiple boulders, in fact. We need to go this way. Jump over the spikes. Down into here. Run over this way. Then along here. Hop over the, the blades. Into here. Quickly. Grab. No, 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 we're not going to make it. I'll, 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 I'll let you watch us get squished. That's only fair, after all. But yeah, if you just if you if you stop a little too late, you've basically screwed it. You're not going to be able to grab it without getting squished. It's really precise. Yeah, it's a mean to. It's not really a secret, is it? Thing. It's, it's like a it's a risk reward thing. Like, do you have the balls to wait around and try and grab it? Ooh, there we go. We got nicked slightly by the spikes, but we're good. Um, now we need to turn left and go through the collapsing floor. And now we're, we're basically good. we just got to avoid these spinning things. These big rolling whatevers. Grab that health kit. Uh -huh. There we go. Okay, right. What we want to do is get to the bottom of this pit. We really we, to progress. We need to zip line across to the other side. However, like I said, secret down there to get. So let's get it. Backwards quickly. 
press the grab button so that we don't fall all the way down. And then I think we can drop and hold grab and no. And dead. No. Fuck. How do I do this? I can't remember. There we go. Problem was I was dropping too far. Shotgun time. Got some like firefly things down here. That's interesting. With the remaster. This is what it looks like in the original game. A little more dark and sinister actually in the original game. And yes! Hello! It's a T-Rex! Oh, that's me out of a... Uh, out of shotty ammo. Oh boy. Ah, go to the end! Grab the secret. Uh -huh. In the original graphics, it is actually still incredibly dark in here. Let me just use a. Oh! Oh! I've, yeah, I've, I, I knew. I, I knew something was missing. The um, yeah, the funky red background is not there in the remastered graphics. Yeah, the weird tablecloth is not present in the remaster. I wonder why that is. We got the grenade launcher from down here. We can use it to kill the dino. Of which there's now two, by the way. They come apart like Lego dinos, yeah, I remember. <laughs> oh, and I'm dead. Oh, sometimes. One dino down. And that's me out of grenade launch ammo. Realistically, what you should probably do is kill the dinos with your pistols. Like so. Uh, and then save the grenade launcher for later levels, but um, ah, who cares? I love the detail on the passport, by the way. It's a small thing, but even remastered all the pages of the passport. Man, I used to have a red passport like that with European Union stamped on the top. And then a certain event happened. Now I have a blue one. Let's not talk about that. And tigers! Yes, I knew those guys were here. I'm just getting... Yep, yeah, hi guys. Oh my god. Ah, dead. And... Make sure you hold action while on the zip line, otherwise that happens. <laughs> Do not simply press it, you must hold it. I think you might be able to actually just skip past them. Let's see if, let's see if, I, if I remember this correctly. I think you might just be able to avoid the tigers altogether by basically just triggering a cutscene. Whoop! Bad kitties, leave me alone! Leave me alone. We just... Yeah, there we go. There we are. Tigers be gone. Cutscene time. Can we switch during the cutscenes? We can! If that was just your way of trying the doors for me. <laughs> Leave that tummy gun on my key ring. Though not anymore. So after you. Their mouths actually move in the remaster. Like That's amazing! I understand that somehow is in my favor. So indulge me about the dagger. I'd be indebted with your life. These doors are waiting for the right one. The right time to arrive. And then the dagger's blade will honor the hearts so cool. of those who believe. 
So unless you pledge your loyalty as well. And which one is that? To the sins and fortunes of Marco Bartoli. Perhaps not just yet then. Still has that slightly wobbly PS1 camera. Aha, uh -huh. Gianni Bartelli, Via Caravelli, Venice. Brilliant! I got all three secrets. I mean, apparently it took us 20 minutes in the end. Continuously, not including reloads. 13 or 14 pickups. I wonder which one I missed. Oh, I think I know the one I missed. The one in the first room with the spikes. Now to Venice! I have to say, I've been curious to see how Venice would end up looking in the remaster. Doggos! wonderful stock dog barking effect that I remember from so many Disney movies back in the day. There we go. Oh, you son of a... You're just smacking me with your baseball bat. How dare you, sir? Gotcha. Right, up we go here. Oh, I must admit, actually, the, the, the parallax effect on this ladder is very good. This actually works really, really well because the edges are sort of like not there. You know, they've, they've, there's planks at the edges of it, so it works way better. So clearly it's a, it's a question of like, depends on the ladder really as to how well that works. There we go. Whoop. There we are. Always leaping backwards like that. It's a little bit of a gamble. Uh, okay. Good, good, good. Oh, this this window is like a lovely 3D window now instead of a, yeah, a little, little 2D see-through texture. A very Minecrafty looking one at that. Yes. Now there's some doggies in here, I think. If I recall correctly. There are, but I've got to get to something over here first, I think. Yeah. Uh -huh. There's a key. I'm just going to back up a bit and then see if I can make this jump. Yeah, you know what? You might be able to, but... Welcome to the boathouse. With the speedboat in it. There we go. That's what I was missing. Oh, and I could actually just unlock this now. I've got the key after all. The non-pyramid shaped boobs are deeply upsetting to you. Well, I mean, I hate to break it to you, man, but um, oh, don't need the photo mode. Her boobs in this game were not pyramid shaped to begin with. Um, as you can see, that was a Tomb Raider one thing. Her, her, her. Polygon's got a definite upgrade in Tomb Raider 2 and 3. So. No tip ponytail in Tomb Raider 1 either. Yep, no. New ponytail. The graphics in Tomb Raider 1 are really basic, even compared to the even even compared to this. Um if you weren't here for the earlier bit of the stream, I did I did take us through the um the, the first Vilcabamba level. Um, in Tomb Raider 1, and the graphics difference when you when you hit F1 to switch is pretty stark. Oh my god, I forgot about this guy. You son of a bitch! Alright, quickly climb out, climb out. Lara, climb out of the water, you fool! There we go, got him. This guy dropped the Uzis, right? 
Aha. Yes. Actually, I don't know if these are the Uzis. They're just some sort of machine pistol-y things. They're not like the Uzis from the later games from Tomb Raider 4 and whatnot. Bad doggos. Naughty doges. Doges of Venice. There we go. There we go. And now we can get back to the boat. Seems like this game is in dire need of a quick save function. That's, I mean, it's pretty much what I was doing. You press F5, it opens the save menu like you just saw there. Although, if you played this on the PlayStation, no such luxury for you. The PlayStation version had save crystals, which were basically checkpoints. Um, and they were very, very unforgiving. Okay, original game graphics. Nothing to see down here. <laughs> I didn't park quite close enough to the edge. <laughs> ah, yes, I remember you need to do this. You need to get into the boat, move it in there, and then get out again. And we pull this again. And... Brilliant! Right. Oh, hello, douchebag. There we go. I remember part of the trick of dealing with these guys was actually just to try and get behind them. Because they have kind of a wide turning circle. There's like a time... This whole area, essentially, is a timed puzzle. That you have to correctly set off in the first place and then zoom through with the... Uh, with the speedboat. Oh, hello, Mr. Douchebag. Oh, God damn it! Climb out, Lara, before you get shot to death. Some ammo for me. Yes. Uh -huh. Right, I don't know if I need to press this now. If there's some other stuff we need to do later. Yeah, okay, so that opens the doors which are timed. That's that's like a timed thing. Right now though, we have other things we need to do. I'm just trying to remember, how do you... Oops, not like that. Um, how do you get the boat to go in turbo mode? Because that is essential to this puzzle working. And that's the reason I got stuck on this level back in the day as a kid for like a week. Because I didn't figure out how to make the, the boat go super fast. bell chiming because that's the puzzle. That's the timer going off essentially. So how does it work to press end? Remember how to make the go boat go fast. Just like back in the day I didn't know then either. I think you just hold down control but it's like it feels less obvious somehow with the new graphics. Yeah, it's more obvious with the old graphics that the boat's actually going faster when you hold down control. Interesting. All right, anyway. 
There we go. Can I jump out of this boat and into the next one? Yes, I can! <laughs> yeah, jump over his head and shoot him. There we go. That's the ticket. Oh, I think possibly this door will, yes, automatically open and a baseball Batman will be summoned if we walk next to it. There we go. This was the piece of the puzzle I was missing. Which opens this door. Aha, yes, here we go. Just now opened up this room. The weird waterlogged uh -huh. everything is ladders room. It's a doggo. Oh, it's a doggo and a dude. Man and his dog. Oh shit. Bad time to switch. There we go. Whew. Uh -huh. Thanks for the health kit. I'm probably going to have to use it immediately. Although I think there's a dude who's spawned outside somewhere now, so... I should really use this right now. <sighs> He spawns just down there, doesn't he? Yep, on the level below us. In fact, I can just go ahead and cheat now and show you. There he is. <laughs> this guy's kind of a dickhead to deal with as well. half my health doing it. Oh, this is not the way. Fuck's sake. No, don't go backwards. Don't climb out, Lara. There we go. There we go. Got him. No drops for me? Really? Fuck you too, buddy. And I may be wrong, but I think there's another guy inside here. Yes. I knew it. And then we have this. Which opens these gates, which are necessary if you want to actually be able to complete the puzzle without time running out. Because they're essentially a shortcut. Now, I'm, the, only, the only thing I'm trying to remember now is if there was an important reason for there being two boats. I can't remember if you need two boats to do the puzzle for some reason, but... Oh, wait, I, I know I know why you need two boats. I think. It's basically is to get rid of the mines, but you need to jump out in time, unlike what I just did there. <laughs> There we go. Sacrificial boat, yes. Oh my god. There we go. Panic shotgun mode. Got the job done. By now in a modern game, your companion would have just done it for you. Mm -hmm. I don't want to rag on modern games too much. You know, I've played my fair share of Uncharted and I really enjoyed it. Um... But um, they're just very different kinds of games to these. There's the other gate. Excellent. Now pretty much everything is primed for us to do the puzzle. I think it's a little unfair to lay the blame solely at the feet of journalists, Hamov. I think the bigwig CEOs... Uh -huh. And the development studios themselves are quite capable of taking agency when it comes to their own decisions. I don't think all of their design choices are being made on the basis of, oh, the journalists will not like it. Like, I get it. There was that one journalist who was bad at Cuphead. Are we really now going to blame the entire game's journalism industry for 
games changing over time and getting a little bit easier and more approachable to newcomers. Right, let's go, Lara. Oh, damn it, that's one of the secrets. You know what? I can't be bothered to get it. We're just gonna go. No! Don't crash into the wall, you pillock! There we go. There we fucking go. That was one of the most difficult levels in the game for me back in the day. Not because the level itself was particularly challenging, just because it took me a long ass time to figure all that out. And yes, maybe it is. Maybe maybe some of these puzzles are more challenging than you typically get in modern games. But I tell you what, like eight-year-old me playing this game would have fucking killed for there to be a side character giving me hints as to what the solution to the puzzles were. Because the alternative was to just get fucking stuck and not make any progress for weeks, which is what I ended up doing with these games. There's so many of these games like Tomb Raider and Indiana Jones where I played like maybe the first half of the game repeatedly so many times because I would, I would always get to a midpoint somewhere in the game where I got to a puzzle that I was stuck at and couldn't figure out how to get past. And eventually, after running around for a while, getting super frustrated, I would either quit the game and go play something else, or I would just go back to the start of the game and play the levels that I knew how to do repeatedly again and again. So... As a, as a grown adult who's capable of figuring these puzzles out, it's like, oh yes, I enjoy this, it's very satisfying when I figure it out, blah blah blah. As a kid playing this, though, I fucking hated it when I got stuck. It sucked. And back then, of course, I didn't have an internet connection, so I couldn't just go online and look up a guide. Frankly, I don't have a problem with games being more accessible these days. There we go. Shotgun ammo, at least. That's nice. Uh -huh. Again, little, I've not been doing the graphics, which is quite so often lately, have I? But there you go. Oh! Jesus Christ, hello. Gotcha. Most of my health is gone at this point, but I gotcha. There we go. That's how you do it. A little bit of flippity flippity. Uh, oh, yes, this bit here. Fucking remember this. So, in the remaster, they've made it slightly more obvious that this is a block you can actually interact with because it looks a little bit more 3D than the rest of its surroundings. Original game! Yeah, good luck figuring out that is a block you can interact with except by accident. Before we go any further, yes, this bit with the weird swords. Ow. Oh, I fucked that up, didn't I? <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Salvageable. Which opens this, right. I can't get over it. It's just such a weird thing to, to to notice, I guess. But one thing I just can't get over is the fact that Lara's fingers exist and are animated in the uh, <laughs> in the remaster. Like when she jumps and grabs on the stuff. Like she actually reaches out with her fingers. Instead of in the original game where uh, nobody in the game really has fingers. She just goes through the entire thing with clenched fists. That's 
try just a forward jump and then ah brilliant, there we go now we're into the rest of the mansion where there are doggies and horrible people who want to kill us well that's me out of shotgun ammo just when i needed it comparison for you. I like the peeling bits of wallpaper, that's a nice touch. Again, quite a different skybox. Similar, you know, like it's still clearly meant to be like in the evening, but it's a lot brighter and more colourful. And obviously just generally higher quality. Also, 3D uh, railings here versus 2D. Very nice. Now then, is there anything to do? Aha. Oh, yeah, it's a little more obvious, isn't it? With the, uh, with the new graphics, because this block is lighter than the others. Okay, it's one of the ones you're supposed to push. Now I figured it out. Come on, Lara. A bit further. Pushing this actual ton of bricks. Uh, there we go. I see you swinging blade things. Well, wow, one of them got me. Oh, my. Big upgrade on the fire effects. We've gone from 90s 2D fire effect to um, early 2000s fire effect. Oh god, okay. Kind of fucked that up, didn't I? God damn it, I need to jump back a bit first. Alright, yeah, you don't have to do it perfectly, you, uh, you just have to do it within the time limit, okay. No, I need to stop first. All right, we need to stop moving before you. <laughs> God damn it! Oh, so close, so close. <laughs> Nailed it. There we go. Finally. Oh, fuck it out. Got about you boys. And we're dead. Okay then. Secret. Uh -huh. Please let there be air here somewhere. Oh Jesus Christ! We gone drown, boys. Oh wait, there's a there's a switch. Okay, okay. Air. Eh. Ah, um, we're back here. Okay, right. Come here, little gold dragon. It's the only one I've found on this level so far, I think. And some... I don't even know what those are. I think there might be grenades with the grenade launcher. And also now the camera is stuck! Oh my god, we've glitched through the entire level and now we're just... Okay. Uh... <laughs> All right then, let's load the game. <laughs> oh my god, I'm all the way back here. For fuck's sake, what's the time? I feel like it's probably... Yeah, it's ten past eight. It's time for me to stop anyway, ladies and gentlemen. Um... <laughs> Good god. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls... Uh, that has been Tomb Raider Remastered. It's great! Highly recommend, as a fan of these original games, I absolutely love it. 
the OG games with prettier graphics running on modern systems flawlessly with a nice high frame rate. And you can switch back to the OG graphics if you really want to, just for the nostalgia. Seamlessly, anytime you want. Just like in the Halo remasters. It's it's good. It's one of them good remasters, ladies and gentlemen. It's one of those rare good remasters that doesn't actually somehow make the game worse. Um, I'm happy, extremely happy to report 